everyone. In the last video, we mentioned that we would record another video where we would explain how to take the AMC practice exams in the shorted format of the MCAT this summer. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. But before that, I want to remind everyone a bit about the differences between the normal MCAT exam and the shortened version that's going to be offered this summer. So on this screen, you can see on the right hand side, the normal format of the MCAT, about seven and a half hours long. And the left hand side for comparison, you can see the shortened version of the MCAT that's going to be offered this summer at about five hours, 45 minutes. So first of all, you can see that there is not going to be a test day certification. The AMC says that instead of having this done at the beginning of your exam, you're going to be handing out this information on pieces of paper when you go to the testing center. Next, you're going to see that there is no tutorial in the shortened version of the exam. The AMC is encouraging people to use the free online practice tool on the AMC's website. So that way you can get used to all of the different online features of MCAT. From there, you go into the different sections of the exam, and notably, all of the sections have been shortened. So you can see here that the science sections, the three science sections, chem, phys, bio, bio, chem, and psych, social, are usually 95 minutes long for 59 questions. They have all been shortened to 76 minutes for 48 questions. You should note that the amount of time that you have per question has not changed. Right? So the exam has gotten shortened, has gotten shorter, but there's no impact on the amount of time you have per passage per question. All of that is the same. The AMC has also specifically stated that the questions that they're removing are test questions. So these questions never counted for your score in the first place. So again, students have wondered, oh, if I take this shortened version of the MCAT, does that mean that it's harder to get a good score because I can only miss fewer questions? What well, actually has no impact at all because all of the questions that were removed never had any impact on your score in the first place. So if anything, it's nice to take this shortened MCAT because then you don't have to waste brain power and resources on questions that weren't going to affect your score. The car section similarly has been shortened. Normally it's 90 minutes for 53 questions. It's been shortened to 81 minutes and 48 questions. Again, no change in the amount of pacing, but you have the same number of minutes and seconds per question as before, it's just been shortened. If you take a look at the breaks, you'll see that the breaks between the chem, phys, and car section and the bio, bio, chem, and psych, social section are still 10 minutes each. The major change is the mid-exam break is no longer 30 minutes. This was usually for lunch, but now that the exam has been shortened to five hours, 45 minutes, you only get a 10 minute break. So this makes the shortened MCAT much more of a sprint as opposed to an all day exam. Now, uh, at the end, you'll still have the void question. It's just been shortened from three minutes to two minutes, so that's not much of a change. And the satisfaction survey has been removed, which is no big deal. So that explains how the MCAT has been shortened for this summer. A common question I've been getting from students is, what do we do about practice exams? Now, there's a lot of practice exams out there from test prep companies, and some of those companies are certainly going to work on shortening their exam for the summer. But what you should know as a pre-medical student is that the most, the most valuable practice materials for students studying for the MCAT are the AAMC practice materials. So you absolutely need to make sure you do all the AMC questions. Here, a problem appears though, which is the AMC practice exams are in this format, the seven and a half hour format. They're not in the shortened format. So students are starting to ask, well, what should I do? Should I just take them as is, or can I try to take them shorter? And there's been a lot of people saying, oh, it's no big deal to take the MCAT in the normal format, but it just doesn't work out that way. All right. And remember, one of the major changes to the exam is that it's now offered three times a day, 6.30 a.m., 12.15 p.m., and 6 p.m., although some of you who just went through registration might have gotten some other times, like 11.30 a.m. or 1 p.m., depending on what your testing center offered. When you're taking practice exams, you should be taking them at the same time that you're going to be taking these exams. 
And it just doesn't make sense to do a seven and a half hour exam at these different time periods. For example, if you have a 6 p.m. time slot, that means you're gonna be taking the practice exam from 6 p.m. to 1.30 a.m. All right, and I'm sure you would argue that normally your exam's supposed to finish at 11.45 p.m. and you're getting a little bit tired, that's fine, but to take it to 1.30 a.m. is really pushing it too far. The other thing is, if you want to emulate the exam properly, you need to be taking the same breaks. So 10 minute breaks between each of these sections for five hours, 45 minutes, isn't that bad. You can go through that time period probably without having a substantial meal. But if you're gonna do a seven and a half hour exam with 10 minute breaks in between, that's not gonna be very fun, right? You don't wanna be sitting through the psych -soc section exhausted and super hungry, right? So that's why our recommendation for students is to take the AMC practice exams in the shortened format. That way you can really emulate everything, especially the pacing, uh, as well as the endurance aspect of the shortened MCAT this summer. So how exactly are you going to be able to do this? Well, what we put together here at uh, Med School Coach is a study schedule that you're going to be able to follow for the AMC practice exams. Now, the first thing you should know is that this has no impact on the AMC question packs, the section banks, and the online questions to the official guide. Those questions you're going to complete the same exact way, but the AMC practice exams you're going to do differently because you only want to do 48 questions for all four sections of the exam and take a 10 minute break in between. So it's a little tricky though because you don't wanna just stop at third question 48 on each section of the exam because the way the exam is set up, question 48 might be the first question of a new passage or the second or third question of a passage. And it certainly doesn't make sense to stop in the middle of a passage, right? If you think about what the AMC said about removing passages and questions, they're removing trial questions and trial passages. When they create a passage, if that passage is approved, it's good to go. It's not like they're adding questions to it or removing questions to it. So if you're going to skip any passages or questions, it should be an entire passage and not like one or two questions from each passage. That doesn't make sense. Um, so what we did to help students with this process is we went through all the AMC practice exams and handpicked passages to remove that would leave students with exactly 48 questions in each section and without being disruptive. So you're not stopping in the middle of any passage. So you can see here an example for AMC sample tests that for the chem phys section, you're gonna skip passage nine and passage 10 completely, as well as freestanding question 57. For cars, you're gonna skip passage eight and completely and so forth for the other sections. And we have put this together for all the different practice exams. So you can also see here for practice exam four, it's slightly different. And that's just because each exam, question 48 gets to a different point. So again, we handpick passages that makes it easiest for students to be able to take uh, each section of the exam, but only 48 questions. Now, there's obviously another question that comes from this, which is the scoring of the MCAT for the practice exams is out of 59 questions. So if you only do 48 questions, then everyone's gonna get a terrible score, which honestly is not that helpful because it doesn't tell you how you are performing and are you gonna be ready for test day. So what we went ahead and did, as you can see on the screen, is for every practice exam, we put together a revised score conversion chart that is out of 48, right? So of course, if you get 48 questions right out of 48, you're gonna get a perfect 132 on each section of the exam. But if you get a different number of questions, right? Let's say you get 38 questions right in cars, you're gonna get a 127, which is a 76th percentile score for that section. Now, this is something that we did not put together arbitrarily. We extracted the score conversion chart for every practice exam, and then we scaled that to be out of 48 questions as opposed to 59 questions. So there are differences. So for example, this was for practice exam four. If you take a look at practice exam three, you can see that there are differences. For example, 
if you're taking a look at the psych social section for practice exam four, you can miss uh, zero, one, or two questions and still be able to get a perfect 132. On practice exam three, you can actually miss zero, one, two, or three questions and still be able to get a 132. The reason why there are differences from one practice exam to another is just because some exams are harder than others. And if an exam is harder, that means it's going to be more generous, as in you can miss more questions and still be able to get a good score. If the exam is easier, that means you can only miss a smaller number of questions to get the same score. This is the same exact thing that happens on test day. Students are always concerned of, oh, what if I get an extra hard chemphys section? What if the car section is really bad? It ends up not making a difference because if that section is really hard, it's hard for everyone. If it's really easy, it's really easy for everyone. And the conversion chart that the AMC put to together will balance all of that. So, Essentially, you should use your AMC practice exams to get a gauge of where you are and just take your exam when you are ready. So again, uh, this is what we have put together for all of the AMC practice exams so you know which questions and passages to skip so you can complete just 48 questions for each section of the exam. And in addition, we have new conversion charts for the shortened versions of the exam for all of the practice exams as well. Now, if you want this information, we're going to include a link below so you can find it. And as usual, as we receive new and additional information about the MCAT this summer, we will be sure to let you know if you want to be notified when we release additional videos on these topics, as well as other important topics of becoming a physician, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.